I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we have with us uh, Niels Andresen, who's the executive director of uh, the Institute of the North, which is about Alaska's whole stack of issues that have to do with the Arctic and the North. Uh, why don't you tell us a little about the Institute? Uh, when was it founded, and how is it organized? Sure. Thanks, Mike. Uh, the Institute of the North founded uh, back in 1994 by Governor Hickel, uh, founded to explore issues of the commons, uh, and especially as they relate to resources and the development of the resources for the benefit of the people. Uh, you know, that was very important uh, to Governor Hickel, um, and it was important, too, to think of these in terms of our strategic location. Um, and today, uh, that location is uh, at the heart of the Arctic. Um, uh, the Institute is a, is a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, I like to say think and do tank, um, focused on Arctic issues, focused on bringing people together uh, to work on policy issues and hopefully see their resolution. Um, and uh, all of that consistent with our belief that uh, resources should be managed for the benefit of the people. So you're one of the parties that is going to be at the table at all these Arctic events that go on around the world. And uh, so we, we hear and know what's going on, and we have our input. Yeah, I think one of the biggest values that the Institute can bring is by being present when others can't. Um, and we can make sure that Alaskan voices are heard at the national and international stage. Um, at the same time, we can look at national and international best practices and bring them back to the state. Uh, and, and the Institute can be that feedback loop uh, between local and international. It's sort of a weather vane, too, that when things are beginning just to to gin up and, and you, you find out about them earlier when you have people at these events. Right. And uh, now there's also, I mean, our own domestic Alaska agenda and issues of the small potatoes, you might say. And and what are some of those that? I, I think there's you know three or four that are really driving why we're doing what we're doing right now. I think uh, declining oil production, uh, huge fiscal uh, or an environment of fiscal constraint. Um, you know, state revenue uh, projections, um, high energy costs, and an infrastructure deficit. Uh, those are things that when, when we're looking at the uh, eight Arctic nations, we're looking for examples of how people have addressed those um, and where we can learn and where we can teach. I think Alaska's got a lot of great examples to share with others. We have other sort of Arctic organizations like the Circumpolar uh, group that was founded in the 70s. Right. Uh, North Slope Rural was a, an instigator uh, yeah. and, uh, well, the Eskimo Whaling Commission. Yeah. There's a, a number of really good uh, Alaska organizations working on Arctic issues. Uh, you have ICC Alaska, the Inuit Circumpolar uh, Conference, uh, who's at the table with the, the Arctic Council. Um, you do have a number of groups working on specific, you know, marine mammals or uh, whaling commission. And I think, you know, when I, when I think of the, the greatest challenge in the Arctic being communication, it's taking those examples and taking the work that they're doing and connecting the dots. And that's something that the Insti Institute can do. Uh, you know, we can pay attention to the trends uh, that are taking place across the Arctic and, and communicating with Alaska policymakers. So we have sort of two levels. You have the high echelon government to government type of thing that goes on, and then you have the people who are right. the grassroots people who uh, they're talking to each other, and you hope to what, get the dialogue between yeah, the two. And yeah. there's three, actually. There's the, there's the government to government relationships that are fairly formal. Um, there's the, the community, the grassroots, as you describe it. And I would say a third is, is maybe the academic community, which kind of stands in, in the middle. Yeah, the, the science, the research that's taking place. I think that's where you see the greatest exchange uh, in the Arctic. Uh, but it's also not connected to community. And it's not always connected to government. So I and we've been there a long time. Right. I mean, like our Geophysical Institute, mm -hmm. Fairbanks is. University of Alaska Fairbanks, the university system is really one of Alaska's greatest assets when it comes to Arctic issues. Uh, and whether it's addressing climate change or you know, resource development, um, the university system's pretty fantastic. And we have a, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge to stay there with financial constraints right. uh, that we have, but they also are funded from a multitude of sources, usually their, their yeah. science. And uh, your funding comes from sometimes, what, state, your broadcast section as a, right. as a C501s. 
three, yeah. We've had uh, actually a pretty diverse array of funding sources for the Institute. You know, we're a non-governmental organization. Uh, we've had state funding in the past. We've had federal contracts uh, for projects that we've done for the Arctic Council. Um, a lot of what we do is con act as a convener, as an honest broker, uh, hosting events and people pay to attend now events. Now, the Arctic Council, I mean, yeah. that's really high level. That's all the Arctic nations. All eight Arctic and nations, the, plus the six permanent participants. And then the, what are they called, the backup? Uh, it's the observer states. The observer right. nations are what, may, generally the shipper nations and the people who want to. Markets and do, others. Market things. Yeah. And uh, they want to know what's going on. Yeah. No, I, part of it. You've had a, a huge increase in, in attention uh, to Arctic issues, and I think that's where the university is really going to be able to leverage its assets. Um, with declining state revenue, I think you've got great national and international interest in the Arctic, and the university uh, has an opportunity to, to that, shine that, there. That's a challenge, to get yeah. our national uh, government and interest and uh, policymakers on board who most of them don't share direct Arctic interests. Right. And, uh, For as much as you know, we're an Arctic nation, in a lot of ways we're not. Uh, and, and so our job is to, to continually reinforce that uh, for, for those outside. Um, I think people are paying attention. The federal government had at least six different reports come out uh, in the last year, plus uh, an implementation or a strategy for its Arctic policy. It'll have its implementation plan uh, out soon. So I think you don't expect a lot of detail in those policies. I mean, they have to make the detail. I mean, the implementation plan I think will have a lot more detail. So it'll be agency by agency. What are their priorities? What are they working on? And how are them? How are they consistent with the the strategy? Um, I think one of the big issues coming out of that will be the integrated Arctic management uh, process that's been suggested. Mills, we're out of time. Uh, I'm Mike Bradner. This has been Capital Blues. We've been talking to Mills and Grayson who is the director of the Institute of the North. Thanks, Mike.